Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab. I'm always on the lookout for new ways of using technology to make my sets sound different from the next DJ. And the device we are looking at today certainly does enable that. It's the Eventide H9. Let's get to it. The name Eventide is a big, respected one in the world of effects. After making a name for themselves in the 1970s with studio effects used by the likes of Jimmy Page, Eddie Van Halen and Brian Eno, they later moved into the stomp box market with this unit, the H9 Harmonizer, representing the pinnacle of their current lineup. Some of you might be wondering why we're looking at the H9 here on DJ City. Surely this is a foot pedal designed for use by guitarists or synth players. Well. Yes, it is, but there have always been DJs hunting for ways to bring studio quality effects to the booth, and having seen two of my favourite DJs, Eats Everything and Sasha, using the H9, I decided to check it out. Looking at the hardware, it has the kind of bulletproof build that you would expect of a device designed to be stamped on by angry bassists on a stage which is soaked in beer. The controls are all nice and solid, with a bright, clear display which scrolls to make best use of the space. Unlike many pedals, it can't be powered by batteries, so it does require the included power supply. One thing which is a big benefit for DJs is that the H9 is a fully stereo device. It can be run in mono, and the unit is very clever about working out what kind of signal is being fed into it automatically, but as DJs we're almost always working with stereo sources, so that's important. Therefore, there are stereo inputs and outputs on the rear, along with another jack for an expression pedal. On the side are MIDI inputs and outputs as well. You can control the H9 over MIDI, sync it to MIDI clock and transmit MIDI clock too, and those features can be utilised with MIDI over the USB connection on the rear as well. I like the tempo adjustment side of things on the H9. Apart from MIDI sync, you can also do tap tempo and you can dial in a BPM directly, which I always appreciate. You can hook it up to your DJ mixer in three ways, via a send and return loop as I've been doing here on the Zone 96, or in an insert fashion as you would do on a Pioneer DJM 900. In theory you could also connect it between a device like a media player and your mixer, but that's going to get real expensive real quick if you want effects on more than one deck. So what does the H9 actually do? It is a multi-effects device, featuring algorithms from some legendary classic Eventide pedals. Firstly, there is the mod factor for modulation, the time factor covers delay, there is the pitch factor for pitch shifting, and space for reverb. Plus there are a bunch of new algorithms created just for the H9. If you buy the max version, which you should, I'll explain why later, then it comes preloaded with 49 algorithms and 99 presets, with over 500 more presets available in the H9 Control app. That app is, quite simply, fantastic. It's available for Android, iOS, Mac and Windows, and connects with the H9 over Bluetooth. Truth is, there's not really anything you can do in the app that you can't do with the buttons on the unit itself, but when you're setting it up and trying to figure out which presets and settings you want, it's a far, far more intuitive experience. For DJs, you certainly wouldn't need it on the road. You would spend time in the studio, save your presets of choice to the H9, and then just use the onboard controls out live. Most of the time, I ended up just using the hot knob on the unit for the presets I'd already set up. How does it sound? In a word, incredible. The quality of the algorithms on offer is far beyond anything I've ever used on DJ specific hardware, aside from perhaps the Zone DB4. If you're looking for a simple delay for doing echo outs, the H9 is probably going to be too much. And like with any effects, it also works best with more minimal tracks, particularly those with isolated drums or other parts. Track to remix deck users are definite winners here. But once you get into some of the pitch factor effects with shimmery tech house vocals and synths, the sounds that the H9 produces are just stunning. The kind of things which could really melt people's brains if used creatively. Thank you. 
Any downsides? Well, firstly, as looking at the app might clue you into, the H9 is quite complicated. If you're not willing to sit down with it for many hours, listening to the presets, tweaking the settings, and figuring out what's going to work best for your sets, then the H9 is not going to be the unit for you. I'm guessing that for an instrument player, the default presets are going to work quite nicely out of the box, but many of those really don't sound good with full pre-recorded tracks, so any DJ will have to put in the time. And secondly, it is fairly pricey. There are three versions, the Max and the cheaper Core and Harmonizer versions. My advice is to ignore both the others and go straight for the Max. The other two come with a much smaller number of algorithms, and although you can buy extra ones through the app, those are around $20 each. If you buy a certain amount of those, your unit gets maxed out automatically and you get all the rest, but by that point you will have spent well beyond the $699 the Max costs to begin with. You get all the future algorithm releases at no extra cost with the Max as well, so value-wise that is the one. The price isn't crazy however. For context, street price of the Pioneer RMX 1000 is currently $799. Now that is a very different beast, but there's no doubt you are getting a lot of effects goodness for your $700 with the H9. And if you're a producer and you can get double duty out of the H9 in the studio too, that price becomes even more attractive. So there you go my take on the Eventide H9. This is definitely not suitable for all DJs. It is expensive and it's very complex. It's not so complex once you get your presets all set up and transferred to the unit. Generally when I'm playing with it, I'm only actually using the hot knob in the middle. That's about all I ever touch. But you need to put in the hours. You've got to spend that time to get those presets all set up the way that you want them. It's going to work for the kind of music that you play. And again, it's not going to be really appropriate for some types of music. I can't really imagine, you know, an open format DJ playing lots of hip hop and stuff, cutting and scratching. This is not going to have as much value as for someone who's playing really, you know, long blends, techno sets, tech house, that kind of stuff. That's where this thing really does shine. Fundamentally, it is a guitar pedal. You know, it's an effects pedal for guitars and synths. And so not all pre-recorded music whole tracks does sound good with some of the algorithms in here. It's just not designed for that. But there is enough here that it's worth buying. If you are playing like Tech House and stuff like that, you can get some absolutely stunning sounds out of it, stuff that just kind of melts my brain. And I've never heard anything like it before. I've never really played with a high-end digital pedal before. And this thing, yeah, it's just superb. The sound quality as well, it's fantastic. But yeah, you've got to be prepared to put in the time, get your presets all set up for you and for your music and you've got to have a send and return on your mixer as well to get the best out of it. All of these factors kind of are against it, but nonetheless, if you've got the budget and you're willing to put in the hours, this thing is pretty incredible. Thank you for watching today. Make sure you're subscribed and you hit that bell icon down below to get notified anytime there's a new video from myself or the rest of the DJ City team. I'll see you soon.